I watch Hello Okanagan from Lake Country. Peter, why don't you tell people how they can get these awesome shirts? You can get these shirts by clicking the link below. Hello Okanagan, welcome back to another episode of Easy Hello Okanagan. I gotta wear the shirt so I can remember what, uh, what uh, show I'm on. Just kidding. How you doing? Pretty good, man. How are you? Great. I'm excited. The summer's still around. Summer is still around. It's still warm. Still t-shirt weather. It's still nice. t-shirt weather. Um, we've had some great episodes. I can't believe we're heading into our fifth month, four and a half months now of doing this. No kidding. This has been incredible. We've had some wonderful guests. We've had some wonderful viewers, people following us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, and giving us comments and being part of the prizes, which is always Absolutely. pretty cool. But on this episode, we met a gentleman who does music videos, he does photo shoots with models, and he saw our shirts and he was in love with them and he wanted to be a part of it, so we brought him down here so we can interview the guy by a gorgeous beach. So. And we're here in Kelowna, we're gonna do some, some photo shoots, we're gonna do some video footage, it's gonna be an exciting episode, a little bit of behind the scenes, and uh, yeah, let's head right into it guys, thanks for watching. Hey guys, welcome back. We're sitting here with Matt from OK Valley Entertainment. Brother, how you doing? Good guys, thank you so much for having me. It means a lot. You guys are awesome. Been watching your stuff since the beginning and honestly, it's just so inspiring. So I love it, thank you. Well, we, we appreciate it, man. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do and where you're located? Um, my name's Matt Bird. I'm located here in Kelowna, British Columbia. Um, I'm born and raised in Canada. I was originally from Toronto. I lived in a few provinces over the course of my life so far. And then I made my way to the Okanagan. And as you guys can see, it's just such a beautiful place. It's so inspiring. It's just such a good vibe that I can find myself probably here forever. So. We uh, kind of showcase that every yeah, time. We, we try to showcase as much as we can of the beautiful Okanagan. Um, where are you from originally though? What, you know, we know you're living here now in Kelowna, but where did you come from originally? Um, just outside of Toronto, so in a city near Guelph, Ontario. Yeah. So I went to school there, grew up for most of my life, and then after that I moved on to Banff and just experiences Montreal. I moved over, learned about culture, different provinces. Well, really, the Tri-City area? Yeah, it's like it? the wagon yeah, wheel situation. Yeah, so yeah, it was cool to like grow up there in more of like a populated situation and then come out here where it's more relaxed and, you know, find something to take hold of and, and see where I could go with it. So it's really nice. So. Sweet man, and what, what do you do? What do you do? Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about? Get that question all the time, <laughs> and honestly, like just from like a little bit of the background, but like all of my life, like. I just found myself infatuated with entertainment, whether it was like singing and music or television shows, anything like that. And even like throughout high school, like I'm in my 30s, so back in that time we didn't really have social media or the experience of like sharing things like that. So I remember when I was in grade nine, I saved up all my allowances and my money <clears throat> to buy like a cassette video camera. And I went to all the parties in high school and filmed everything and everyone thought I was delusional. They're like, what are you doing? And I used to like sit in my room and like talk to myself on the camera and be like, we're here in episode three and every Everybody thought I was delusional and I was like, no, it's the future. And I was like so far ahead in my time that when YouTube came out and that's what happened, I was like already gone in that sense. So I was kind of like always ahead. So like to sum it up, best is like production. I love to produce things like, you know, I'm not going to sit there and want to write music all day, but I'm going to find somebody that's perfect for this song or this beat or this vibe or this video. And I love just piecing things together, like in any sort of way, creativity and content. And I just, I ball it all up. So production is literally the best way to say it. And also like management. I love just elevating people's careers and making sure like, you know, they know that if they have potential, where they can go with it. So. And as you know, I mean, that was my background. Managing yeah. Managing artists and touring with like Ariana Grande and the weekend and stuff like that and I appreciate what you do and it's great that there's another brother down here in the Okanagan helping people out because there's a lot of talent I noticed when I moved out here myself and you know we got the experience and we have the contacts best thing we can do is help so people out but I wanted to ask you what's your favorite part like the is it the management is it the finding talent is it doing music videos is it doing photos like it, where you know what's such a good question because honestly to be honest that answers two good questions and it comes down to like somebody asked me well why would you name it that it comes down to I could have named it 
anything, but I named it the Valley because my whole goal was bringing people together. So my favorite part of the job would have to be seeing so much talent in so many different ways, whether it's even just objects from somebody local, whether it's cars or, or, or fashion. And my goal, I wanna bring as many people together as I can, because people don't understand, like this is Canada's Hollywood, like literally. And it's like, it's kind of sleeping right now, and people don't realize that. May not film the most movies, but we have that Hollywood lifestyle. It's so, also the weather and the look. People and call it the California yeah, the Canada California, here. California, right? Yeah, so the California. Yeah, California. Yeah, Caliona, right? Yeah. So I just love like bringing singers with musicians and like everybody I can to just work together that's like my main goal the thing is you can't do it by yourself like you have to have people help you don't have an ego it's get so people true. around you that can help you in different aspects of your career and honestly in a sense of like social media and like the instant fame it's kind of killing that vibe because a lot of social me media people think I can just do it overnight I don't need anybody that's fine yeah. but I really somebody said this the other day it's so awesome that you guys are asking me this but they said Imagine like Instagram just stopped. Where would half of those careers that we all look up to now really be? It's not a rude statement. It's a yeah. real reality, no, it's, right? It's, it's an awakening, honestly. I mean, they've already pulled likes. Exactly. So that's already like crippled so many people. Exactly. Now there's talks about pulling followers too. And what happens when that happens? Wait up. There's also talk about in the U.S. at least the pulling TikTok altogether. Exactly. And there's people making a living off TikTok exactly. in the U.S. If you're just one TikToker and the, and the platform fails, you're kind of like out of luck, but if you like had five people and you were like a TikTok team, if that app had crushed, you guys still have the potential to be your team, your crew. You can open so many more avenues instead of saying, I give up, I have nothing, right? So people need to realize there's more. Well, it's, it's the perfect example of what happened with Vine, right? I mean, Sean Mendez picks up off Vine Great and becomes example. Sean Mendez so now, true. right? You look at... Uh, Justin Bieber off uh, YouTube. Justin yeah. Bieber off YouTube. Two Canadians, King, yo. King yeah. Batch now is... <laughs> yeah. uh, an yeah. actor all over and he's popped on TikTok yeah. too but it, it's the diversifying the same way you diversify your investment portfolio you got to diversify your attention right 100%. you don't just stick on one platform you spread out yeah. on all others yeah so cool. and that's a little bit I want to throw on too is a lot of people get the misconception because like we have a lot of women that live in the valley and women tend to want to you know follow their dreams in entertainment a lot more than men or at least express it more. So my portfolio is from children the age three that literally want to be in a diaper commercial all the way up to 50, 60 year old people that call me. So I want people to realize that there is so much diversity just in this little city and space and all the area of the Okanagan that people need to wake up. It's not just the stereotypical thing. There's so much amazingness in this valley and that's honestly was my goal originally it was just like yo I want people to wake up you know there's people here that help you there's people that know hey if you have yeah. talent don't say oh well, I'm from a small town in Canada I'm kind of screwed not the reality two biggest artists on earth are from small towns in Canada yeah. So right, so we got to look at a situation like that. It's not where you're from. It's we what also you do. We live in a digital age. Exactly. So I know some of the biggest managers yep. in certain genres of music that live in the Okanagan in a small, small town. They're doing it because you just need to be near an airport and you can get somewhere. But everything's done digitally. So it doesn't matter where you're from or where the person that's your manager, your agent, your marketing director, or your publicist is from. As long as they have the talent, you can trust them, and more importantly, you've seen their background of what they've done. So true. You can do it from anywhere, man. You're watching Hello Okanagan. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and like for more content and episodes. Hello Okanagan, I'm Elizabeth Flowers and here's your Okanagan update. 
Kelowna-based mental health and social enterprise You Are Collective and Childhood Connections have partnered up to create a new collection to fund free child therapy. The Playful Healing Collection aims to open up conversations around mental health experiences while removing barriers. You can support this initiative by purchasing a shirt online from youarecollective.ca. We have three great markets that you can visit this Sunday. We have the Mission Community Market, which takes place from 9 until 2, the Summerland Farmers and Crafters Market, which takes place from 9 until 1, and the Peachland Farmers and Crafters Market, which takes place from 10 until 2. And this year's Canadian Mental Health Association's Run for Women has gone virtual. Runners are encouraged to run where, how, and when they want to. Between September 17th and 27th, participants can do something great for their mental health while doing something good for the community of Kelowna. All proceeds raised through the $40 registration fee will go back to support the women's peer support and resilience services through Discovery College. That's all for this week's Okanagan Update, and now back to the guys. You know, some abandoned, crappy location where it's a junkyard or whatever, but artists, I mean, we look at this differently. Like, this can be a great backdrop, like the reason we're trying to use it right yeah. now for whether it's a photo or a video shoot. And people think graffiti is garbage, but it's not, man. People, no. people uh, you know, it's 50-50 on that, but now it's actually gone mainstream. I've seen it in, like, some major centers around the world that I've traveled to where actually graffiti artists are getting paid to yeah. do murals now, which I think is a really cool now, thing. Let's, let's separate it though too from, there's there's graffiti and street art, and then there's just tagging <laughs> buildings. <laughs> yes, you are correct. <laughs> so like, you are let's, correct. let's separate those, because I, I absolutely can respect graffiti and yeah. street art. It, you don't want to really see it in your the shop. Place up. <laughs> you, wanna... you know what, back alley it has a place for it, but yeah, if you're writing yeah, totally. a word that nobody can read in a phallus yeah, on yeah, a wall, like yeah. or I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna call that graffiti yeah. and No, street totally, art. same with the racist <laughs> remarks and yes, all that. Yeah, of course. Um, I wanted to ask you now, you were growing up out east, like who was one of your biggest idols and influences, whether it was in this side of the camera or in front of the camera? Honestly, it was always since I was a child, as like cliche as it is, but it was Hugh Hefner. It wasn't about his lifestyle, it wasn't about the women and all that. I got over that when I was already a teenager. I was just so infatuated with his longevity, his reassurance of knowing everything from his daily meals to his daily routines to the credibility from the queen and the things like that. It was on such a level of, oh, it's just a dude that has all women. It was more like this dude really knew what he wanted from the day one to the day that, you know, unfortunately he passed away. And, and as funny as that sounds, but that's really when I launched the company. I looked up to my idol for so long that he went on and I said, you know, it's, I want to, you know, pursue making photos and making women feel like the way he did, right? So. And you know what's cool? I have, what is it, a couple weeks ago on Amazon, I saw a mini series on him. And I think it was like six hours in total or yeah. whatever. I couldn't believe from the day he got the idea, from the amount of people that were against the idea, yeah. and from even when he hit success, trying to stay successful, because I was told that by long, a long time ago by somebody too, yeah. that you know, it's, it's not that hard to make it here, no. it's hard to stay yeah. there. But here we are in a world talking about pivoting. Yeah. Literally, it felt like every five, eight years in the last 50, 60 years of his career, he had to pivot, because it was something new that came out, or a new it competition, is, yeah. or somebody that was against him, or just whatever happened to try to you know, take it away from him, yeah. how he pivoted to take his, himself to yeah. another level. So I do respect that too. Yeah, so pretty much. People yeah. only see the one side, like you said, they don't realize the business side of it. More of, yeah, mentality, more of what they now call social media appearance. Hefner obviously looks like the biggest, baddest dude that ever lived. Yeah. But in a sense of, if you took all that away and went into his mindset in the early 60s, yeah. you would see more of what we're talking about, right? Yeah. So cool. him, and then I just say Al Gore overall, just, I love the earth and I think that people take advantage of where we live and honestly on a whole different note I just am very well like I'm an environmentalist man so like you said people see this as oh the painted washed up pool this is art this is like creative ville over here and like at the end of the day it's a piece of nature and it's beautiful yeah. and like yeah. people yeah, you gotta take advantage of a lot of things in this world and I think that people need to step back and really look at what is reality cool, so cool. yeah I like to put that in my art and in, and in my clients and as much as music videos too to just showcase what we can so yeah, yeah. No, and, you, and you, you brought us out to obviously this wonderful area in uh, this is southern Kelowna I guess here and 
What are some of your other favorite places to shoot in the Okanagan or Kelowna, wherever it may be? So I actually did a, a podcast a couple of weeks ago and, and the, the, the guy there had said, man, you do a great job making the Okanagan look like 70 other places. So when it comes to my style, I'm, like, I'm an outdoors person. I'm always hiking, I'm on adventures, I'm at waterfalls, and I really love nature. So my goal is to really put the beauty of humans and the beauty of where we come from and put them together. There are so many other photographers out there that do the low lighting, do the cool lighting, do the indoors, and I provide all of that for my clients and anyone that reaches out. But if I'm personally constructing art, I love to bring the beauty of, of especially the Okanagan or anywhere in California or Oregon or wherever we are in the world. I want to, you know, clash humans with nature. That's just the bottom line. It's my favorite. So beaches and things like that in Kelowna, anywhere with sand, cliffs, things that a lot of people in the rest of Canada won't see or maybe somebody from somewhere else that doesn't know Canada goes, where is that? There's no way that's Canada. That's yeah, what you hear all the time. Exact, There's no way that's Canada. That's why I love that. Yeah. I get that experience and I get that all the time. People yeah. are like, wow, you shot that in Kelowna? I'm like, yeah, you just got to find different there's so many angles to life and the cool part is like some people will say okay yes the whole california thing yeah. but then there's the europe thing yeah it's the windy roads it's the hills it's, it's um orchards yeah. and the water everywhere yeah. and the vineyards everywhere so yeah, yeah man we're just real lucky living out it here it really is but outside of the okanagan if you had one wish mm -hmm. perfect location that you would love to go if there was an unlimited budget where would you go to shoot a music video or a photo shoot i would actually i would go to bora bora it's just got these levels of like uniqueness where it's like the floating tiki huts and, and the glass water yeah. and the shallow beaches and the, the volcanic pyramids. There's just something about it where I feel like I could utilize that space phenomenally. But in an unfictional world, I'm actually really satisfied with the Okanagan and I could have went anywhere and I really wanted to come here. Whether I was Canadian or not, I'd probably love this place regardless. So I'd say Bora Bora and then right where I am today. Cool. So. And what about music videos now? So what do you look for when an artist says, I want you to shoot a music video? Do you, has there been others that you've said, you know what, I don't feel the vibe. I mean, I, there's nothing I can get inspired from. Correct, actually, and I think that's important. And I hope that artists that like hear or see this right now really understand that. To take offense to a director to be like, hey man, I'm sorry, this is not my vibe. You should say thanks, thank you, because I'll, I'll find someone that, I don't want somebody hating on my project while they're doing it. I, fortunate enough, don't really have to do that much. I have great artists, great talent, and we come from a great place, so I, I usually catch a vibe. I'm very creative, but I always tell other people I work with, because I do a lot of production. So there's yeah. usually a director and a cameraman on set. I'm just providing things, yeah. and I can see that sometimes. Like, man, this guy's not really feeling this. Or I see it and go, holy, this is the best well, I like, oh man, we're vibing today. Let's get the behind the scenes. Let's yeah. really showcase the Okanagan. So yeah. yeah, it's very important people speak up when it comes to business. Because at the end of the day, unless you're shooting with your best friend, it is a business. It is fun, but you gotta be real. You can't, you can't half at the, the, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. So yeah. Like, no, of course, there's, a, there's that fine line between like optimism and delusion, right? right. And, and one of the gotta, biggest things I used to always say too is like, when they wanted to find a photographer, if you want to find certain people to work with yeah. you, if they say, I need a thousand bucks up front, yeah. or I need this, or I need that from you. No, no, no. If they believe in the project, they're going to take a percentage from what you make. So they got to hustle to make their bread. 100%. But as far as actually paying someone, like make them write a treatment out. Like find out if you get the vibe of what they're saying. Because some people will take your money. Yeah. Like she wants me to shoot a music video or he yeah. wants me to shoot a photo shoot for him. Cool. Sure. But it. yeah, like let me know what you think first. Like interview them, yeah. talk to them, get to know what they're like, throw ideas out and see what they think. Yeah. Don't just work with anyone just because they'll take your money. And that's very important. And I think that this is a major question that might have been asked. But when someone asks me, why did you do this? Why did I make this idea? Why did I make this company? I spent so many years managing almost my really close friends, whether they were musicians, famous models, talent that live outside of our country. And I just saw the struggles of what shady, bad, or unfortunate scenarios were. And I saw how it literally made some of the most talented people in their world have a little crumble, and then they, they literally quit their career. And I'm thinking, no, 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 no. There's always a way around the fork in the road. So my ultimate goal was to really show people in Kelowna that we're here to help, and I wanna help any way we can. So my ultimate goal as like, is 
please don't be shy please don't hold back even if you think it's cheesy or you're nervous reach out reach out because i want to help i want to make sure that people realize that you know you don't have to hide behind a bad experience that happened or things like that so when it comes to booking a shoot with me or my company and things like that i just want you to know that you're not booking a job you're actually booking a memory yeah when i shoot with girls they always leave with a memory versus just a set of photos and i think that's very important so and it shows an experience an experience man. you learn something from everybody a lot that you work of, with and this is something i'm going to put out there on a limb this is for a lot of the photographers that maybe will see this but you need to communicate more with your talent i have 90 percent rate of my girls tell me it was awkward today the photographer just didn't speak he didn't talk he didn't let me know if i looked good i couldn't really even see any of the photos to know if my hair was okay People don't understand how important that is because you're, you're selling an experience. If they just want photos and like you said, oh, I'll take your money. Honestly, that's on to you. You guys, that's for you to figure out. But if you want a true experience, make sure you talk with your photographer first. Maybe meet up with him. Visualize stuff. Really yeah, important totally. to communicate yeah. because when you go out, you want to have an experience and something worth remembering. So a lot of mine is you're doing great or I'm coaching and I'm like, I'm not quiet and I always have the best feedback. Well, after. the cool part is when we were doing the photo shoot with us knuckleheads and then mm -hmm. your real models there. Um, the encouragement that you gave, yeah. you know, and, and just make, I mean, you talking like that, yeah. and I've seen it with others, is it brings out the personality in that person as well. Really so does. the more you talk and the more you are giving us good yeah. feedback, like you can't do anything but like your chest goes up and you smile and yeah. you feel better about yeah. yourself because of the encouragement that you gave. I'm so, I'm so happy you got encouragement. He, he really needs it, man. <laughs> <I don't> <laughs> <think> <laughs> it's, <laughs> some days, I gotta yeah, say. Yeah, some days, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, well, thanks, thank so you, much, thank thanks so much, Matt. Really appreciate it. Really, I'm happy Pleasure you guys you came out. I honestly want you guys to shout out Hello Okanagan. Watch them; they have lots of cool stuff coming up. Greatest show. Follow the Valley, support the Valley, and just know there's people like us always here to help. We love you, y'all, and spread peace. Hey guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Hello Okanagan.